Good morning, friends. It's Sue Fuller here at South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church on Wednesday, January 25th. It's been a while since I've been with you for the morning devotions. Um, I was on it, true confession, I was scheduled to to do the devotions the week between Christmas and New Year's, and I kind of forgot. Um, so um, it really has been a while since we've been together. Um, but I'm glad that you're joining me this morning. I hope that um, things are going well on this cold, blustery morning and that you are um, staying warm inside or if you have to be outside today that you're being careful on the roads. It seems like things are moving a little bit slower out there than normal, but um, I'm just really glad to be with you and get to spend some time. And in case Chris Kozik is watching later, I was actually on time today. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, this morning when I woke up, I got a message from my um, my Russian mom. And we send voice messages back and forth. And she reminded me that on the 25th of January, 1995, was the day that I went to Habarsk for the first time. So it's been 28 years. And so it's a little bit of an anniversary for me. And... Um, I just can't believe that it's been so long. I can't believe um, that I've been back from Russia for six years already, over six years. And I'm just so thankful um, that the Lord allowed me to be there for so long and have the relationships with people that I do that have lasted so long. So, And I'm so thankful for my church family that um, helped support me and pray for me and encourage me and and just um, all the things that South Harbor Creek as a church really did in my life um, from the earliest days in Sunday school all the way to the time when I felt God's calling to go to Russia. And so it's kind of a good day for me to do the devotions and a good day to thank God and to thank the church family for all that you have done for so many years while I was in, in Russia and just the way you love on me now since I've been back. Um, I'm also really thankful this morning for our church family. This morning I saw Dane and Joanne were here early um, bringing some stuff in. Kim Peters has been around a lot. She's been going through a lot of the stuff in our church and um, a lot of the closets that we've kind of stuck junk in and she's helped cleaning out and she has spent many, many hours doing that. You know, for the staff, you know, Gordy has his early morning Wednesday morning guy group here. You know, so he's up here early. Pastor Tim's here. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the week between Sundays here at, at church. And we're just very, very blessed to have so many volunteers and people that are so willing to help and and just get the stuff done that needs to get done. I told Kim Peters I want her to come live at my house to help me get through all the junk that's built up in my house, just even in the years since I've been living at my parents. So, um, but we just need to give a little shout out. Also, two weeks ago, we had the district youth event here, and we had a phenomenal turnout of adults that were willing just to come and help and serve and get all the stuff done that needed to get done, make milkshakes. And and um, I just, I there's lots of things that I love about South Harbor Creek, but just how everybody's so willing to step up and to help and to get things done that need to get done. So just wanted to give that little shout out this morning. Um. January has been kind of weird and just it seems like the holidays were just just that like a week ago and it's been a month already since Christmas and so I feel kind of out of the loop in some ways. Um, Gordy was out of town on the mission trip and um, just a lot of stuff that I don't really know. A lot of the updates of things that are going on in our church family in terms of things that we can be praying for. So please don't hesitate to send me a text, um, give me a call, and let me know how we can be praying for you better. Even though we're not doing this prayer thing every single week on Facebook Live, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock or 9.15-ish, I'm in the nursery upstairs, and if there's something that I can be praying with you and for you about, please don't hesitate to come up there and we'll um, spend some time together in prayer. So I just wanted to let you know, keep keep me posted on things that I can be praying for. Um, this morning I talked with um, Sally Jones and got a little bit of an update. We've been praying for her sister um, who lives down 
Greensburg area who um, was diagnosed with some cancer in the liver area, that kind of thing. And she had surgery and the surgery went well and she's doing okay and it hadn't spread to her lymph nodes. So that's a huge praise. So let's be praying for her for healing that she starts to be doing well. Uh, or continues to do well and that the treatments hopefully have worked and have kind of taken care of the issue, but we still need to be praying for her. Also, she gave me an update on Lucas. Um, I haven't updated everybody in a while. He is home. The family lives out Gerard Lake City, that area, and um, he still goes down to Pittsburgh once a week on Thursdays for some treatment. Um, and for right now, because his immune system is so um, suppressed, you know, they're really limiting people and he can't get out and go to school. And um, so he's going a little stir crazy because he's an active young boy, praise God. But um, they are going to have a teacher that comes in a couple days a week and it's going to be working with him because with all the stuff medically going on with him, he really hasn't been able to do his schoolwork. And so those things are starting up again. So um, that's another huge praise that, that Sally wanted me to pray to pass on to you. Sally is um, Tabitha. The mom has gone back to work. And so Sally has stepped in and is staying at home with Lucas. Um, so we haven't seen Sally around um, on Sunday mornings recently, but she's with us in spirit and in heart. And she just wants to thank everybody for, for the prayers. I talked with um, Elna yesterday. Um, she has some health issues that have um, been kind of coming on for a little bit of a time. Um, nothing too, too serious, but um, concerning for her. And so let's just be praying for Elna that um, that God would just arrange every single step of the things that she needs to get in order to get some treatment for this. Um, <clears throat> we love Elna and Elna is such a huge part of everything that we do here at South Harbor Creek. So let's be lifting Elna up in prayer. Um, we wanna be praying for Marilyn Binney. Um, Marilyn, I have, she is on here a lot of times on our devotion morning, but we've been praying for you, Marilyn, even though, um, we haven't seen you in a while and, um, but she's having chemo this week and then the beginning of March, she's going to be going down to Pittsburgh. Um, and I believe the first steps for, um, a bone marrow transplant, um, Ellen was sharing yesterday that they have found a match and so um, that's a huge praise. So let's be continuing daily to pray for Marilyn, just for strength and um, for the medical team that's working with her and, and just that God's peace and his presence would be really close to her. I talked with Mike Neenan on Sunday. Um, he's feeling pretty good. He's done, I believe, with his chemo and his radiation and those things. Um, but he's going to be meeting with a surgeon soon. That was kind of the next step after after having some treatment. So let's be praying for Mike and for Dorothy, just for continued strength, that he continues to do well, and just for wisdom in making decisions on the doctor's side and on Mike and Dorothy's side. Um, but let's continue to pray for, for Mike Neenan. Now, I don't have an update, but we want to continue to pray for Gretchen. She is home. She had um, hip replacement, gosh, probably before the holidays. And... Um, She's home now. She's trying to go through some stuff in her house. And, and again, you know, these silent helpers, there's several people from our church who've been going over there and helping. Kim's one of them, just helping Gretchen go through things like this. And, you know, I think those kind of acts of service really are things that God is calling us to do, kind of without everybody noticing, nothing too showy, but really stepping in and helping some of our, our widows in our church and some of our older folks. So let's continue to be praying for Gretchen that she continues to build up strength and, and do well. Um, the same thing with Bob Rathman. <clears throat> I don't have an update on him, but let's continue to be praying for him just for strength. He's such a good, a good man. And um, I really, I forgot to ask Gordy before I came on for prayer time today for an update on Bob, but let's be praying for him as well. Um, Colleen asked us to be praying for um, Dave's brother. He has some health issues. He's been kind of in and out of the hospital, so we need to be praying for him. Dave's sister was in and out of the hospital for some stuff. It's just, there's a lot of stuff that goes on all the time, and we don't always mention it to everybody, but 
Um, let's be praying for Colleen and their family and probably many of your families that are going through a lot of stuff too that we don't know about. Um, there's a girl, Denise, that I graduated from high school with that um, she's got some serious health concerns Terry was sharing with me. Um, let's be praying for Denise. Um, Sometimes I feel like uh, those 28 years in Russia don't count and I'm still 25 years old, but I'm not. And my friends are not either. And a lot of these health health things come up as we age. And um, But we need to be praying for Denise and, and her family. Um, we have a huge praise, the success of the mission trip. Gordy was in my office kind of sharing some stuff with me this week. Um, or yesterday about about their week down in the Dominican, and hopefully we're going to have a chance for them to share with the church sometime soon. Um, I think we're starting post-COVID now to um, be in a time that we can really start looking at maybe doing some mission trips with our church family in other places, not necessarily overseas, but in another country, but that um, is also very much a possibility, as well as some community things that we can be doing, some more outreach. Um, I'd like you to be praying for um, the youth retreat this weekend. It's been kind of, I've been kind of one track this week trying to get um, stuff done for that. Um, Pray for safety for the kids. Just We're going to go up to Peak and Peak on Saturday, and there's going to be tubing and skiing, so pray for no issues with that, that God would just really open the kids' hearts this weekend and reconnect with God. Um, for a lot of our kids, you know, one of the things that I've noticed a trend in youth ministry after COVID is those things that we didn't have during COVID regularly, like Sunday night youth group. Um now that COVID's over has been filled with other things. And it's hard sometimes to get the numbers out that we once did on a Sunday evening, but we have 35 kids coming um, to this retreat this weekend. And so we are just gonna, we're gonna have Bible study. We're gonna have some really neat special prayer time. Pastor Tim's gonna come and do communion with the kids. The kids are leading, the senior high kids are leading the worship service Sunday morning at Camp Finley for us. And so just pray that God's spirit would be all through that place this weekend and that um, the kids would experience God in a new way. Also pray for uh, me and for Jim Leffler. We're going to be doing the teaching. He's going to be doing the junior high. I'm going to be doing the senior high and we're going to, um, for the Bible studies and and just that that God would just give us his words and wisdom and and lead in a way that um, kids would draw closer to God. We have a lot of kids in our youth group that are inviting friends. So we're going to have a, a group of people that are there who may not have ever heard about Jesus before or about a personal relationship with him. So just be praying for the whole thing. I also want to mention, I see Stacy's on here this morning. Um, we want to be praying for Aiden Miller. He's going to be going down to Spark. Now we've talked about Spark before. We've gone to Spark before. It's a um, United Methodist Conference that they have down in Pittsburgh. But we are so proud of Aiden. After our mission trip this summer, he wanted to join um, the Conference Youth Council, which is um, different kids from youth groups all over Western Pennsylvania, from the Methodist churches that that um, do the programming and all the things for this conference. And so we want to be praying for Aiden for a great week to, or weekend down in Pittsburgh. We're sad he's not going to be with us. But we're really excited for this leadership opportunity for him and that he's kind of stepped out and, and taken that. So pray for Aiden this week as well. Um, I want you to be praying for um, just all the things, these unspoken, unknown requests, because there's a lot of stuff going on in our church, and I, I know that I don't know all those things right now, and we need to <clears throat> be praying for for just those things on our hearts that we don't share with anybody else, but we can still be lifting each other up in prayer. We want to be praying for those that are grieving. Um, I didn't mention, I don't know if I mentioned in church a couple weeks ago, but Rob Crosby, um, his sister passed away within the last couple weeks. And um, so let's just be praying for those that are grieving right now. Um, on Sunday morning, someone asked me to pray with them about addiction, someone that they love very much who's really struggling with addictions. So we need to be praying for, for our friends that struggle with, with addictions and also for our friends that struggle with mental health. You know, gosh, this week, Four days in a row, at least, of gray. 
<laughs> and I'm really thankful that I don't have that seasonal um, depression. But, you know, there's got to be a lot of people struggling with that right now with it just being so gray and yuck around here and eerie. So that's one of the many things that our friends um, struggle with with some mental health things. But we need to be praying for them too. I think I got a pretty good list out there for us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you um, for this morning. We thank you for this time that we, as your church, can come together and we can pray for some of the needs that are going on in our, our church family this morning. There are many. There are so many things going on. And, and this small list that I read this morning is just really the tip of the iceberg for so many um, hurts and illnesses and and things that are going on. But Lord, we just want to lift all of those that we mentioned up to you this morning. For those that are struggling with their health, Father, we pray for your touch. We pray for your healing touch. We know, Lord, in a Bible study just starting last night and, and reading in the Gospel of Luke, just how many times, Father, that your touch healed. Um, and Lord, we're just praying for that touch from you, for those that have cancer, for those that are struggling with um, heart issues and um, need healing for bones, that, Father, that are struggling with their emotional issues, that are struggling with addictions. Lord, we ask right now in Jesus' name for your healing touch for each of those that are going through that, for their physical healing touch. But, Father, we also ask for your spiritual healing touch on them. And we kind of say that as an afterthought. You know, we're so focused, Lord, on, on physical healing for people. But Father, we know that whenever we go through something that's tough, something that's disconcerting, something that um, is out of our norm, it just seems like our, our heart and our spirit and our mindset isn't right. And so, Lord, I just pray this morning for your touch to keep our eyes focused on you to keep our eyes focused that you are a good father, that you love us and you care for us, that there's nothing that we're going through that is a surprise to you, that there's nothing that we're going through that you and your strength and your power and your love can't help carry us through. Lord, we pray for our kids. We pray for Lucas, and we're just so thankful for how well he's doing, and we pray for that to continue. We pray for... Um, Zachary and and Lucas and Zachary are brothers and we're just praying father for all the things that go on in a family when one child is sick we pray for little Lowen and the things that are going on in her health um, it seems like they're going through a decent season right now but we want to lift her up and continue to pray that father you would um, just surround her with your love and your care and her family with your love and your care as well Father, I just want to lift up this weekend to you with the youth. I thank you, Father, for just what a privilege it is to have a relationship with these kids and to um, get to know them and to see your hand at work in their lives. Father, I pray for the new kids who've never experienced this before. I pray that you would touch their hearts in a way that they've never been touched before by you, that you would give them an openness um, to receive what you have for them this weekend. For those of our kids, Lord, who do know you and have a relationship with you, I pray that it goes deeper. I pray that, um, Father, that you would just give them clarity, that you would speak to them and that they would have ears to hear and to listen to that. I pray, Father, for um, Friday night, we're going to have our worship time. And I just pray, Lord, that you would give us a freedom in worship maybe that we haven't really experienced before, that our kids haven't experienced before. Just that thankfulness and worship and praise of you and how good you are and your love for us. Lord, we pray for your safety. We pray for patience for the adults that are going. And we just, Lord, know that you go before us and that it's going to be a great weekend. Father, there's so much that... Um, that we have seen you do and work in our lives, in our church. Um, and we are just so grateful that, that we know you and we're thankful for that, that we can share that love with other people. 
Father, I just pray right now that you would be with us as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but del deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks, friends. It's so good to spend some time with you today. I hope you have a really, really great day. And again, if there's anything that we can be doing, any way we can be praying for you, please don't hesitate to text me, email me, call me, call the church, whatever um, it is, because we want to be praying for you. Love you guys. Have a great day.